In this video, we're going to focus on converting atoms to grams. So here's an example problem. How many grams are present in a sample of 3.7 times 10 to the 24 atoms of sodium? So what do you think we need to do here? Here's the blueprint of what we need to follow. We need to convert atoms to moles using Avogadro's number. And then we need to convert moles to grams using the molar mass. One mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23. That's Avogadro's number. When you think of a dozen, a dozen represents 12. So a mole is simply a large quantity of something. A mole of calculators is this many calculators. So let's start with 3.7 times 10 to the 24 atoms. Now, one mole of sodium is equivalent to 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms of sodium. So the unit atoms will cancel. Now, the last thing we need to do is convert moles to grams. The molar mass, or the atomic mass of Na, is about 23 grams per mole. So what this means is that one mole of Na has a mass of 23 grams. Now all we need to do left is cancel moles of Na and we can just calculate the answer. So it's 3.7 times 10 to the 24 divided by 6.022 times 10 to the 23 and then multiplied by 23. So the answer that I got is 141.3 grams of sodium. I'm just going to double check my work, make sure I didn't mistype anything. And so that should be the answer. So that's how you can convert atoms to grams. So you take the number of atoms that you have, divide it by Avogadro's number, and then multiply it by the molar mass of the element. Now granted, some problems will be harder than what we're dealing with now. But progressively, I'll increase the difficulty of these problems. I want you to understand the basics first. Here's another example that we could work on. Number two, what is the mass in grams of a sample containing 4.8 times 10 to the 23 atoms of chromium? So we're going to follow the same process. Let's start with what we're given, 4.8 times 10 to the 23 atoms. And the substance is chromium. Let's convert that to moles using Avogadro's number. 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms of chromium can be found in one mole of chromium. So atoms of chromium, that, unit's, uh, that unit will cancel. So now we need to convert from moles to grams. So you need to find the atomic mass of chromium in the periodic table. It's the larger of the two numbers. The molar mass of chromium is 52 grams per mole. So one mole of chromium contains a mass of 52 grams. Now, just like the last problem, we're going to take the number of atoms that we have, which is 4.8 times 10 to the 23, and then we're going to divide it by Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23. And then multiply that by the molar mass of chromium, which is 52. So the answer is 41.45 grams of chromium. So that's a simple way in which you can convert atoms to grams. Number three, what is the mass in grams of a sample of P4 containing 5.6 times 10 to the 25 atoms of phosphorus. So we have atoms of phosphorus. That's what we're given. We need to convert it to the grams of P4. So this problem is a little bit harder than the last one. More steps are involved in this problem. So feel free to tackle it if you want to. Go ahead and try it.
So just like before, we're going to start with what we're given. 5.6 times 10 to the 25 atoms of phosphorus. Now let's use Avogadro's number to convert from atoms to moles. So one mole of phosphorus is 6 times 10 to the 23 atoms of phosphorus. And now that we have moles of phosphorus, we can convert to moles of P4. Now P4 is a molecule. One molecule of P4 contains four atoms of phosphorus. So this is the extra conversion step that we need. However, we need to modify it because we have moles of phosphorus on top. So we could say that one mole of P4 is equivalent to four moles of P. So one mole of P4 contains four moles of P atoms. Or one mole of phosphorus molecules contains four moles of phosphorus atoms. We want the units to match. So you just have to understand that P is an atom, P4 is a molecule. So now there's one more step that we need to do. We need to convert moles of P4 into grams of P4. And so we need the molar mass for that. So phosphorus has an atomic mass of 30.97, and we've got to multiply that by 4. So P4 has a molar mass of 123.88 grams per one mole. So one mole of P4 has a mass of 123.88 grams. And now we can cancel the unit moles of P4. So what we're going to do, we're going to follow mostly the same steps. We're going to take 5.6 times 10 to the 25, the number of atoms, divided by Avogadro's number, just as we did in the last two examples. And in the last example, we multiplied it by the molar mass, which in this case, it's 123.88. The only difference between this problem and the other problem is we need to divide by 4, because there are 4 atoms of phosphorus in P4. In other problems, if you're going from, let's say, grams to atoms, you would multiply by 4. But if you're going from atoms to grams, you need to divide by 4. So the final answer, rounded to the nearest whole number, is 2,880 grams of P4. So that's the answer. That's equivalent to about 2.88 kilograms. Number four, how many kilograms are present in a sample of carbon tetrachloride that contains 7.5 times 10 to the 25 atoms of chlorine? So let's start with what we're given. So we're given atoms of chlorine. Our goal is to convert from atoms of chlorine to kilograms of the sample carbon tetrachloride. The chemical formula of carbon tetrachloride is CCl4, tetra is 4. So not only do we need to change the units from atoms to kilograms, we need to go from atoms to moles, moles to grams, grams to kilograms, but we must also change the substance from chlorine to CCl4. So that's an extra step that we have to consider in this example. So let's convert from atoms to moles. So this 6 times 10 to the 23 atoms of chlorine per one mole of chlorine. Now that we have moles of chlorine, let's change it to CCl4. So one molecule of CCl4 contains four atoms of chlorine. So we could say that one mole of CCl4 has four moles of Cl. So let's put that in the next fraction. 4 moles of Cl is equivalent to 1 mole of CCl4. So that's how we can convert from one substance into another, or an element within a compound 
to the compound itself. So now the units atoms of chlorine is gone, and so is moles of Cl. Now, what we need to do next is convert moles of CCl4 into grams of carbon tetrachloride. So we got to find the molar mass. CCl4 contains one carbon atom and four chlorine atoms. The average atomic mass of carbon is 12.01. The average atomic mass of chlorine is 35.45. Thirty five point four five times four, that's about one forty one point eight. And then we just gotta add twelve point zero one to that. So the molar mass of CCL four is about one fifty three point eight one grams per mole. So now in the next conversion step, we can put one mole of CCL four on the bottom. One mole of carbon tetrachloride has a mass of 153.81 grams. Now the last thing we need to do is convert grams to kilograms. One kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. And so now we have the desired unit, which is kilograms of CCL4. So we're going to take the number of atoms, 7.5 times 10 to the 25, divided by Avogadro's number. And then we're going to take that result and divide it by 4. And then multiply by 153.81, and then divide it by 1,000. So the final answer is 4.789 kilograms of carbon tetrachloride. So here's the last question for this video. If you want to, you could try it. Number five, how many milligrams can be found in a sample of tin 4 phosphate that contains 8.7 times 10 to the 22 atoms of oxygen? So what's the first thing that we should do? The first thing that I would recommend doing is finding the chemical formula of that stuff. So what we have is an ionic compound. So we got to find the charges on tin and phosphate. Tin is Sn, and the charge is based on the Roman numeral. The Roman numeral tells us the charge of a metal. Some metals have variable charges. Tin could be plus 2 or plus 4. In this case, it's positive 4. Phosphate is PO4 with a negative 3 charge. So let's exchange the charges with subscripts. And so this is going to be Sn3 PO4 times 4. So that's the chemical formula of tin phosphate. Now what we need to do is we need to find the molecular mass or the molar mass of this thing. So we have three tin atoms, four phosphorus atoms, and four times four is 16, so we have 16 oxygen atoms. Tin has an atomic mass of 118.7 and phosphorus is 30.97 and oxygen is simply 16. So 3 times 118.7 that's 356.1 and then 4 times 30.97 that's 123.88 and 16 times 16 that's 256. So now let's add up these three numbers. So this will give you a total of 735.98 grams per mole. So that's the molar mass of tin 4 phosphate. Now let's clear away a few things. So let's continue. 
let's start with the number of atoms of oxygen, which is 8.7 times 10 to the 22 atoms of oxygen. Now, just as we've been doing before, let's use Avogadro's number to convert atoms of oxygen to moles of oxygen. So one mole of oxygen is 6 times 10 to the 23 atoms of oxygen. So what do you think we need to do next at this point? Our goal is to find the milligrams of tin phosphate. So we need to convert from O to tin phosphate. How can we do that? How many oxygen atoms are in tin phosphate? Notice that there are eight oxygen atoms. Four times two is eight. Actually, that is not the correct formula. The correct formula is, there should be a four here. So it's actually 16. Four times four is 16. So what we can say is that there are 16 atoms of oxygen in one formula unit of tin 4 phosphate. So therefore, there are 16 moles of oxygen in one mole of tin phosphate. This is the conversion factor that we need for the next step. So I'm going to put 16 moles of oxygen on the bottom, and on top, one mole of tin 4 phosphate. And that should be a 4. Now let's move on to our next step. So now that we have moles of tin phosphate, we can now convert it to grams using the molar mass. So one mole of SN3PO4 times 4 has a mass of 735.98 grams. Now the last thing we need to do is convert grams to milligrams. One gram is equal to 1,000 milligrams. And now that's it. So at this point, we just need to do the math. So 8.7 times 10 to the 22 divided by 6.022 times 10 to the 23. That's a small number. That's 0.144. And then divide that by 16. And then multiply the, that result by 735.98. And then multiply that by 1,000. So it's 6,645 milligrams rather than the nearest whole number. So that's how many milligrams of tin phosphate or tin 4 phosphate that we have in this problem. So that's the answer.